What's up, buddy? What's up? So, uh, we kind of had to <clears throat> cut and take a break from the time lapse last night. Uh, was getting ready for the final assembly and figured out input shaft wasn't going in quite right. So, we, uh, Tim found a bad bushing inside the planetary set, so it's pretty tedious taking apart the, the planetaries. It's got needle bearings inside, so we called it a night. Got a fresh start this morning. It's Friday. We're racing tomorrow, so got a long day ahead of us. But um, we'll put the picture up so y'all can see of the, the bad bushings. It was pretty neat and uh, ready for the final assembly now. We're going to let kind of let Tim do his thing and He'll kind of point out as he uh, puts it together. How y'all doing guys? So main thing we found was it flipped this ring, which is convert converter charge pressure. Make it makes the converter charge pressure go all over the place. Uh, main other problem was um, it caused him to do that. It chewed the bushing up in the stator tube. A lot of the clutches got hot. Uh, the bearing or the uh, brass washer that goes inside the bottom of the planetary was all chewed up. The old input, this input shaft actually had uh, some brass material in there. The band, like I said, band and clutches uh, mainly just kind of got hot spots, but uh, uh, definitely need to be changed, but not necessarily causing a, a problem. So uh, we'll put it together. These are going to be reverse clutches. Be your planetary ring gear. This would be your 180 planetary power glide FTI. would be your high gear drum. This will be your band. This is actually for first gear. This would be your band struts. We do have a lot of this already sub-assembled, just try to make it go a little bit quicker. This will be your, your uh, steel sleeve, which planetary or something blows up. It helps keep it contained, part of the SFI stuff. Not all the cases have them, but this would be an ATI case, so they do. Pump gasket. Pump. Oh. Always want to try to push it in, guys. We don't really want to beat it in. If you have to beat anything in, something's usually wrong.
करते हैं How many power guys would you say you build like a lot like a number per probably most of your works power guys no build a lot probably more 400s but probably yeah. like three or four a week three or four power guides a week all right guys we don't want to tighten them with an impact we'd like to tighten with a torque wrench just so everything's even make sure input shaft spins clearance has already been checked Check park. This is going to be an FTI valve body, one of their cast iron ones. Everything's pretty much built aluminum nowadays because of the availability of cores. And less manpower still a real good one this is one of their mud brakes <clears throat> I always want to make sure that that's seated and if you're going to tap it in, make sure you use a rubber mallet because these deals bend really easy. Let's see. I like to at least put the solenoid in the hole. Just to kind of keep the trans brake valve in there or modulator valve, whatever you want to call it. I think most people seen them by now though, but FDI has these enclosed trans brake solenoids so mud doesn't get in here and lock them up. So we used to have to take cans, all kinds of stuff put around them back in the day before they started making these and just keep mud out. They actually have a new one out. These come from, these actually come from another supplier, but they have a new one out. Uh, sometimes they'll get to where they'll leak out of here when they've been really, really, really old ones. So they've gotten to where they uh, have, uh, they actually make a billet housing. I don't know if it's been released yet. I've seen some pictures of the prototype, but it looks like it's a pretty good piece. start running trans brakes in those race trucks it's kind of a loaded question yeah what class yeah well i mean like how far along in like those career did y'all start using trans brakes well casey been doing it longer than i've been alive so <laughs> um man I, honestly funny story like my first my first race truck uh was a super stock truck the wild thing truck and uh, I bought a set of tires off a guy in San Antonio. With, pretty sure they were probably hot. I get paid like 250 for all four tires and wheels. And uh, I put them on the super stock truck and ran modified that weekend and somehow got third place. Just luck of the draw kind of thing. And after that, I was like, man, I need a trans brake. I need a, I need four link. Like I'm ready to go up a class, you know? And, and then it all kind of spiraled out of control from there. Once again, guys, we never want to fully tighten these things down with an impact.
should probably be a little faster with a speed wrench. But. How about you, Tim? You got any stories like that? Man, I mean, I think I started off like most of most mud racers, and the stock classes just bringing your daily out, so throw some mud, and then got the, the addiction and the urge like everyone else, and couldn't really find anything more fun in life, right, than mud racing. The speed itch. Yeah, well, the speed itch and the mud itch. Yeah. You know. You go faster in the mud. Well, wasn't one of the first events you went to the Great Texas Mud Race? Uh, no, I was racing in San Antonio. By the time I went there, I actually went, let's see. Well, I remember you telling me you were on a trip and like stopped by on a trip or something to catch that race in Nacogdoches. Yeah, so when we st I started racing, like I, would, I got the fever right away where I was going almost every weekend. And then we went, let's see, we went from stock, or I guess now they would call it, well, no, we were probably regular stock. We never really went to hot stock. And then from there we went to economy, which was an older class. And then after that, we kind of went to super stock and stayed there for many, many years. It seems to be the most people. Is. Well, it, back then when we started, there was a lot more rules. Uh, you couldn't even have cut tires or trans brakes. Yeah. That's why I said that was a loaded question when we were asked, because we couldn't even run them. What class? But um, there was a whole lot of rules. And as time went on, certain tracks has changed things. but. I was probably racing a few years before I, I got to go to that Texas mud race and I didn't even have, I was, I think we were in Mississippi and I ended up having uh, a, uh, like we were on a trip, a family trip and we were looking for a race and we just happened to find it on Facebook or something and decided to go and we didn't even have a, have a truck and it was a blast, you know? So, I mean, other than, since then, you know, I can remember selling a truck one time just because of uh just you know just because we're all kind of crazy when it comes to spending money on trucks and thinking differently and i remember showing up at the so i think i sold it at the end of the year show up for the first race just to watch and here we go again yeah the fever starts you know yeah uh give me one second guys i need to get a filter You got the spacer or is it still in the court? No, it's right. It's already ready to go. Awesome. Try to have everything somewhat assembled. Yeah, I, re I remember, especially like my late teens, early 20s, I was just so addicted. Like if the race truck was broke, I was racing the four wheeler, the four wheeler, the my Z71, my daily driver, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the owners of the mud drags used to laugh because they never knew what I was going to pull up in. That's what, what are you racing today, Casey? You, you remember how depressing it was when they canceled the race? Oh, it was the end of the world. Huh? It's like, man. Guess we got what well, er, 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 <laughs> Yeah, everybody would start calling me back in the day, and they'd be like, so we're going to run at the test track in the back? And we'd just barbecue and... Well, back then we all had like play trucks too, yeah. and so. Maybe we got to put on that for your Christmas event. Yeah. Get everybody back get out. Yeah, yeah, times times get better, and we can actually afford to have a race truck and a play truck. <laughs> I want to say like how we did back then, every Christmas we had before those races. Yeah, for. I think the audience would like that. Tell us what y'all think in the comments. Yeah. Just it got so big, so loud, and they had so many friends that was come, and the trucks were just getting so fast. That yeah. It just turned into a lot of work. Maybe we can put something together like that. Our own race tober. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or what's the one that they're putting on? Race day. Race yeah. Race day. This weekend, I think. Yeah. Put her on the southern twig. Huh? <laughs> I'll tell you guys a good practice. Anytime you bolt a pan on, always check this. Lots of silicone, right? Yeah. Because it looks tight, but it's just finger tight. 
Another good practice is to try to snug it up before you finish your bowls, just so you don't forget. Those things are loud, right? Up going down the track. And it's actually easier to use the right wrench than a crescent wrench. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Crescent wrench is the right wrench for everything. The adjustable hammer, as they call it. The adjustable hammer. The thing we like to do is always try to start your bolts by hand. Thanks. Especially with the aluminum. So Tim, what was your, I don't know, most enjoyable or favorite truck that you, because I know you've had quite a few. What would you say is your favorite? I think probably. So I remember the first one that I saw was that orange one. Oh, uh, the, the, the old still cranking truck. And that was like, I had had a bunch of trucks by that one. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that I really remember. And I remember, like, I didn't even, like, uh, like, put two and two together. So I'm like, well, that's the guy with the orange. Oh, so that's the truck you got. I that I, I kind of put everything together. Which that was, that was probably six more years ago. I've always tried to try to be different. You know, like, I had a... I guess a square body when we first started because it was the one we bought, but I'd always had newer, the newer style trucks just, and not because I needed something newer. I just kind of liked the idea of being a little different, you know? So we had a couple of the like, what do they call them now? The OBSs, like I had a, we had a 95 and I had a 97 one time. I've actually had two of the 99 to 06, I guess 07 if it's a, if it's the uh, classic, which was what the black oh, truck I had was. Yeah, the bubble eye, cat eye. Yeah, I had two of those. The I think the black home record truck was probably one of my favorites in the very beginning stages of it, just because it, uh, I mean, it, it did a lot more than we thought it would. It, it won a whole lot in the beginning and it was just fast. And, and I then- I always enjoyed the look of it too. It was always a pretty truck. We cha changed it up several times in the front end, from front ends to hoods to, but <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the, I, I think I had about 47 had of them fly off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, and that in cornfields, yeah, yeah. a couple, couple trips, yeah, couple, couple, couple trips through the cornfield. Well, we always, obviously, when you're well, when now you know you got certain classes that are having uh, have uh, weight rules. So when you go to those tracks, uh, you gotta you gotta weigh a certain amount. Which, I mean, I, let's go back to where we started talking about this. Some of us were had the itch so much. You know, like, or even power glides or 350s. You couldn't have three speeds at some, I mean, two speeds at some tracks. So we, we would have a transmission for both because we didn't want to, uh, we didn't want to not, not be able to go because of that. Yeah. So we swapped the training and go. You know, same thing on, uh, same thing on, um, uh, what was it, uh, suspensions? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people would change their shocks out. You know, a yeah. lot of people would. Couldn't run coilovers. Or, right. Yeah. You could either, or you could, you couldn't like at one yeah. at one point in time, the southern rules you had to only had you could only have a two bar suspension set up in the rear, and then in East Texas they allowed you to run ladder bars, yeah. and then vice versa, and it it's um, definitely a drawback to you know for one Texas being so big, and then two is you know mud racing you if you wanted to you could build a track in your backyard you know and so oh, yeah that's like a, <laughs> yeah you know and it's a it's a blessing and a curse because there's been times where somebody gets upset because they don't like the rules so they just start up a whole new track and a whole new set of rules and then that just spiral out of control from there and, which at the end of the day kind of hurts the sport more than it's ever helped it. I mean, we always want more tracks and so, more places to go. But So this gasket does only go one way. I usually line it up with the big hole. If you flip it upside down too, the holes really won't line up. So that's the way it pretty much goes. And usually this piece always usually always goes down. Going back to the some of the differences and the versus the versatile trucks that some of us had to go going back to the weight rule you know one of the smart things was to 
make it to where you had something that would bolt onto your truck so you could make weight so you yeah. weren't counted out because of a race yeah you know or even what was it the cut tire game too like you couldn't hammer you could so you you know if 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 you found a good deal on them or you could just afford a bunch of sets and you know you could have a couple sets to where you you were always um able to not to race you know and uh i, I remember going to mud races uh I know we did with the Hustler, the old Hustler, um, and uh, Mudbird, which is now Thunderstroke. I remember we would uh, have like cut and uncut tires. And I remember being oh. a little kid, like I, I wasn't old enough to like help out yet. But I remember like running back and forth to watch y'all change the tires. Yeah. And that was it, always fun. Yeah. Well, it was like the, the big events like Nacogdoches where we would have trucks from New York to Mexico come to the event and uh dennis man he always tried his best to accommodate everybody and and fit everybody in to a class or if there was enough trucks coming we would make he would make a a special class you know to to make sure everybody got to come and experience it and that's that's one of the things that really made it a great event um like it's called yeah, the Great Texas Mud Race. I mean, though, there'll, there'll never be another one like it. But uh, and there's been people who tried to. But yeah, but it. Reach that. That, that was, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, my, hopefully someday. Yeah. You know. Uh, maybe with this channel, maybe we can. Maybe, maybe we. The audience of this channel will get everybody. Maybe so. That would. Uh, that would be awesome. Big thing is, they say you build it, they'll come, but it takes money. Yeah. You know we. We get some same thing with your bolts guys if if you're driving them in with an impact because something's wrong like try not to do that like find a new bolt find, or, or fix the threads <laughs> fix the threads which was definitely that bolt because we put a new one and it was fine uh one more thing especially in aluminum I remember the Nacogdoches was definitely one of my favorite events that I got to experience. Yeah, we look we look forward to that all all year. Yeah. You know, and that was another thing. You know, like having a super stock style truck is you could fit into so many classes. You know. Yeah. You know, and if if you had a, a fast truck, you know, you had a chance to go up and step up some classes and at least have a chance to maybe pull out a third and uh, bring home some more money. And it was, uh, you know, and put your stuff up against, you know, these trucks from out of state and just kind of see how you stand. Like that one time in Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder? <laughs> that one time in Blue Thunder, you didn't even... <clears throat> make it through the month long, but you still warm because that's how sloppy it was yeah you just made it the furthest i remember that yeah i remember they uh changed the rules where you couldn't have a dominator so i went ordered a carburetor a 950 just from a vance auto just to make the race and i put a nitrous kit on it to step up and run the nitrous class and that was in Hustler, right? No, it was in Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder. But it uh, didn't have enough. Why well, I tried spraying it with nitrous, it oh. didn't have enough CFM. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it ran faster off the bottle than it did with the bottle. It was uh, the Hustler you ran methanol on, right? Well, we we were mixing fuels. Yeah, that's why. More alcohol. Spraying nitrous with Q16 and. Running the carburetor of meth. Yeah, that's right. That was one. That's yeah, some serious stuff. Yeah. And then your Uncle Jeremy drove it the next pass and the rod came loose. Yeah. So it's always when Jeremy gets in the truck, something breaks. So, guys, on your band adjustments, FTI. Uh, cast iron brakes they usually recommend about three and a half uh, tighten it up to 72 inch pounds back off 
to three and a half. The aluminum breaks three. Uh, go by whatever the manufacturer says. What I usually do is I'll usually just eye it. This one's going to be three and a half. So you could use a wheel if you really want to, but. Guys, we need to tighten up this uh, solenoid. And she'll be ready to put her on the wood and send it. She'll be ready to go. We got some things to do with Here's your crescent wrench. Yeah. It's probably a little big, but with these solenoids, they fit in there. The adjustable. And that should be it, guys. All right, going to close it out. Yeah, so. Oh, and one more thing. You could put this on the pan or the frame. Yeah, ground the... Yeah, I, I try to go to the frames. I've had some trouble. I try to just leave it off. If the customer wants to put it wherever they like it, it's fine with me. Most people do recommend not the pan, though. Most manufacturers. Yeah. All right, Tim, man, we can't thank you enough. Man, you saved the day again. Again. Last minute racing over here. Uh, now we just got to take it home, get the unit put in. Do a little maintenance on the motor. Maybe we can get some test hits in before it gets dark tonight. Load up and get ready to head to Matagorda County Mud Drags. So, Good luck, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. All right, we got everything ready to go in, and we'll see y'all when it's in there. All right, everybody, so... We got the transmission and the transfer case in Blue Thunder. Quite a while ago, we got all the drive shafts in and we are putting fluid in it right now. We got the tack back wired up and working. All right, we just got done getting the truck running. Transmission worked flawless. Um, I believe we have the, the tack fixed. We'll uh, try to do a test hit in the morning before we load up see uh make sure that's working figure out the shift point on this combination for uh jared and um man that's that's about it uh been a long day mm. glad it all finally come together though it, we kind of fought a few things this week and uh yeah but tomorrow's race day I'm kind of excited. I don't know about you. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm ready to see what it's going to do. Get old girl back on the track. But uh, be good to see the blue back out there. Yep. But can I say enough for Tim at Winter Circle Transmissions? He really, Thank you. he really, really come through for us. And uh, like y'all could see how it was last second what we were talking about but the day before the race, and we had to get it done. And he was very yeah. generous and helped yeah. us out. And Use his expertise over there at Winter Circle Transmission. So if y'all ever in the the market for a transmission in general, or especially a racing transmission, what he specializes in, go over there, go get at him, and uh, get you a transmission. I'll put you in the circle. Yep. So, but that being said, we're gonna call it a night. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. And, uh, we'll see you at the starting line.